Yesterday, my good friend Jason from BDO sent me an email early in the morning, which I didn't check till noon because I was out. And the question was interesting. Can we fire a flow from a guest account? Basically, a flow that is fired manually. Uh, can we expose it to a guest user, a user which is not part of the organization, and let this guy fire the flow? And me, just finishing the course on Udemy about uh, Power Automate and the web APIs, immediately I'm thinking, ah, sure, no worries. Put an HTTP trigger right in the beginning of it and let them call from whatever they want. But basically, that is not directly giving access to flow to a guest user. The reality is that as of today, we cannot enable guest access for the direct triggers in the flow. So basically, if you go to the flow, you cannot go to the security and share the flow with someone who is not part of the organization. But there are a few ways around it. One, as you guessed right in the beginning, is instead of using the regular trigger, use an HTTP trigger, create a request, and then let them call it from whatever they want. But in the Microsoft ecosystem, in the Power Platform ecosystem, there is something else that's going to make our life a whole lot easier, and that is Power Apps. Yes, Power Apps, when you create an app, you can share it with the guest users. So if that's the case, if we fire a flow using Power Apps, we are golden. So, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can fire a flow from Power Apps. The first solution that we want to discuss is creating a flow. And this flow is just a regular trigger flow, but we want to replace that trigger with a trigger from the Power Apps. So when the user opens this Power App, it fires the flow exactly the same way that you fired the flow from the trigger inside the flow. This Power App can be given access to the guest user. Second approach is you create a Power App that updates or creates record in your data storage. And that this data storage can be SharePoint, can be SQL, can be Common Data Service or anything else. And then your flow actually has a trigger that is watching that storage. So when the item is created, the flow is fired. Of course, in this example, the guest user does not directly call the flow, but the outcome is the same. Third approach is instead of using the button trigger on the flow, we use the web API approach. So basically we create an HTTP trigger that the user directly calls that, and that call can happen from anything. Basically, it can happen from mobile phone, from a web application, from a website, or anything that potentially can make a call to a web API. So in that case, we fire the flow. Of course, these are all alternatives, but our approach today is going to be replacing a trigger in a flow with a Power App and see how this works. To do this, I've already created a list inside SharePoint, and this list has just two fields. One is title, so basically the request is received, and the requester email as a second field. Of course, you can go ahead and add as many fields as you possibly can. So to make this process a little bit faster, I already went to Power Automate, and I created this flow. It's a manually trigger a flow, so when somebody fires this flow, they enter a request, request goes to SharePoint, and creates an item. In the Flow Power App test list, it creates an item that contains the title and the user email. And finally, in the Send Email, it sends the email to the person who fired the flow with a copy of the request to confirm that we received the request. Of course, this flow can have so many steps and I just simplified it because this is our focus area. Let's test it and make sure it works before we go any further. I put a request, 
this is a test directly from flow button and run the flow done and if I go here let me refresh this and we got it with the email address that is assigned to that user and now if I go back to my mailbox and this is my mailbox with the latest email that I received from this user now let's go back to my flow and see how we can replace this form with Power Apps. To do that, I go back to edit mode. There are a few things that I need to do before I get there. The values that I get from here are basically two values. I get the request and I get the user email. I don't need anything else, although if I really want, I can add them exactly the same way. So for these two values that I get here, I create two variables just to make my life a little bit easier. So I just add an action variable. And if I click on the variable, initialize variable, the first variable that I want to have is request. Let me just rename this. Initialize request. The type is going to be string and the value is going to be request. Great. I also want to create another variable, variables. And if I click on it, again, initialize variable. And this variable, I want to call it user email. And again, rename this action so that it represents the variable that it initializes. Again, this one is a string and the value is going to be the email that I get from the user. User email. And I save it. When I go to the create item, instead of request, I just get the request from the variable. When I get to the email, I get the email from the user email from this variable. So I do not use the trigger values directly. Same way when I go to the email, I take this out. For the email, I use user email. And for the request, I use request from the variables. So nothing has changed. The only thing that I've done, instead of using the values directly from trigger, I put them in a variable and then I use these variables in the rest of it. The whole idea is that when I replace this trigger, I don't want to go through every single step in the flow and update the variables and make changes. So keep it in mind, if you are creating a flow that is supposed to be called from Power Apps, just put all the variables right in the beginning and get the values that you expect to use from the trigger inside those variables. So far, so good. Let's test it and make sure it still works and we haven't broken anything. I call it test after adding the variables. Run flow, done. And I go back here, refresh this page test after adding variables. Great. And let me check my mailbox and test after adding variables. Fantastic. Now let's go and make it Power Apps friendly. At this moment, I go back to edit again and I delete this trigger and I replace it with Power Apps. So Power Apps, Power Apps, and that's it. Save. Seems like we're good, but we still don't have the values from the Power Apps to the initialize request and initialize user email. This is the beauty of the Power Apps now. I want you to take a look at the code that it has. At the moment, it does not have any variables, so it does not give you anything if you make the call to this flow. But we need to have at least two variables that are coming from the Power Apps. In this case, I need the request to come from Power Apps. Great. I put the cursor here. Ask in Power Apps. 
if I just click on this one, it creates a new input parameter from the Power Apps and assigns it here. How cool is that? Then again, I go to my email, put the cursor here. I say the email, ask Power Apps. Again, it creates another property here and gets it from the Power Apps. As I add these variables, let me just save it, the Power Apps trigger changes. So you see now there are two variables that are required. One of them is initialize request value, initialize user email value. Great. Now we are ready to go to Power Apps and create a Power App that make this call. We go to make.powerapps.com and I say create. Just make sure you save this one before you go to Power Apps. Now, the simplest way that I can create is Canvas app from blank. So, and this app I call it my app to call flow. Let me make it proper. And it doesn't matter if it is the tablet or phone, I just click on create. And the app is created. Skip. Let me make it a little bit bigger so that you guys can see it. On the top of the page, I need to add probably a label. And this label is going to be request. I need to put a text box right in front of it. So I click on text, text input right under this. Probably I want to make it a bit bigger. And I don't put any values inside it. I just change the ID to txt underscore request. Hungarian notation, so everybody knows how old I am. <laughs> okay. So, so far, we have a text box that accepts the request. User email, I really don't need to add it here. Power Apps can read it from the user. Great. Now, under this, I just need to add a button. And this button is going to be fire the flow. I just changed the name, btn underscore fire flow. Fire. Okay. So everything is good. The only thing that we need to do now is to define an action for this. So when someone clicks on it, it actually goes to that flow. While I'm selecting it, we go to action. And under Actions, I call Power Automate. Here, you see all the flows in your Power Automate that have the Power Apps trigger. The flow that we are using here is called External User Demo. So I go back to the Power Apps, External User Demo. I just click on it. It takes a while and it is added. Now, here is the interesting part. When you define this run method here, it automatically gets the parameters that we defined there inside Microsoft Flow. So now I can come here, initialize request value. So this is our request value. I can say txt request, which is this text box dot text. The second parameter is a user email, so comma. Second parameter is going to be user dot email. And I close the bracket. That's it. So we got the text and we got the user email as the two parameters that we want to pass to the Power Apps. Good. Let me just make sure everything sits there. Perfect. I can go to File menu, we can save it, 
my app to call flow great name is cool i just save it i don't need to share it yet i close this and let's run this guy request this is the request from power apps fire the flow i'm not sure if it did the job or not but let's go to flow course and here this is the request from power apps and it also got the email right well you may want to make it a little bit better so let me just close this and because it doesn't give me any feedback yet if i want to make it look a little bit better i can add another new screen and this new screen maybe i would say success and we just need to go back to the first screen that i had and right after this fire the flow right after this i want to maybe add another line let's say navigate and the first parameter is going to be the screen that i want to pass so screen two comma and how we want to show it maybe the fade is going to be our transition we're good to go and so the first one is going to make the call to the flow second one is going to take me to the second page so let's run it again and see if it goes well two and fire the flow successfully completed now it takes me to the second page and let me refresh this list inside sharepoint and we got the value here isn't that cool and that was all about it sorry i was quite busy with another udemy course so i finished it day before yesterday and i submitted it to udemy for review as soon as it is public i will put out another video and uh, share free vouchers with everybody stay tuned and that video is coming soon probably in a day or two